What to do, what to do, what to do, what do we do? This border crisis. Well, obviously we would have a problem if criminals and drugs and weapons or even worse than weapons, weapons that could be called dirty bombs, nuclear dirty bombs or something was being brought through piece by piece to be assembled at a later date in a later location. Yes, that would pose a tremendous problem. So barring all that, we do have an issue, but we've also got an issue of what if manufactured or not, what if some of these children, what if some of these mothers of the children, what if they generally are seeking a better life? What if they are persecuted? What if they are escaping potentially death? Potentially slave labor? Potentially child pornography? Child prostitution? Who knows? What if they are just seeking asylum? and something better than what they come from. We have laws, yes I know. You need to get in the back of the line and wait your turn. But that can be a very long time. Does that mean it's okay to just sneak across? No, that doesn't make it okay. So what do we do? How do we handle this? How will we absorb these people? How will we integrate them into our society? How much money is it going to cost to do all this stuff? How are people going to respond to it? I don't have all the answers. Like I stated when I opened the video, if we're getting thug gang members, MS-13, what other dirtbag little gangs there may be south of our border. If we're getting drug runners from the cartel or drugs themselves through. If we're bringing guns or if we're bringing components that could possibly make up dirty bombs then we need to stop those things. But I'm not sure we can take kids. I know it's a prey on sympathy, possibly, if it's a planned, orchestrated ordeal. But kids are kids, you know. And they're just kids. if they truly are meaning well. And all I can tell you is what's been told to us. We have something called a Bible. Other than the being a history and the teachings of our Lord, of God, think of it as your operator's manual. Like I'm, Maybe I said it before. Your car as an operator's manual and you know how to fix things on your own, how to operate it, how to do maintenance from the operator's manual. So in a strange way, consider your Bible, your operator's manual, your how-to, your what do you do, how do I do it? If that helps you to understand things anymore. So we consult our operator's manual, the Bible, and what are we told to do? We're told if someone's sick, we need to treat them. 
We take care of them until they get well. Uh, leprosy, skin diseases and stuff. Cleanse them. Raise the dead. A lot of you saying, well, how can you do that? Well, God has given you powers that you don't understand because you you're not reading your Bible. You're not thinking. It also says cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. You have the power to do these things. We have the power to do these things. He gives you the power to tread upon scorpions and cast out demons. You yourself can cast them out if you have strong enough faith and belief and your worship of God is true. He has given each man, each woman powers. He didn't leave you alone. He didn't leave you defenseless. And he's there alongside of you with all his power. But the evil is done what the evil is done throughout the ages. And man basically has no knowledge that they can do these things. And, and I don't mean raising the dead by technology either. These are all powers that come from faith and prayer and belief. He also told you when he was hungry, he gave him meat. When he was thirsty, and he gave him drink. He was a stranger, didn't have any place to stay, and he took him in. He didn't have any clothes, and he was naked, and he gave him clothes and clothes and clothing. And when he was sick, he visited him and checked on him and treated him. When he was in prison, separated from everyone, he came and seen him. So what he's saying is when you're hungry, when you're thirsty, when you're homeless, your clothes are wore out, you only got one change in or something, you're ill, then you help people in whatever situation it is. Now this is for uh, this is for when you pray. It's an interesting it's an interesting verse when you think about it because you think of the uh, churches nowadays and um, not to bash them again, just to inform and get you to think. Because I went to a Catholic grade school. I went through the masses, and I know how it was then. I haven't been to a Catholic uh, mass in quite some time, but I believe they're traditional, and I don't believe it has changed, if any. But I remember it was quite repetitious. I remember they had a prayer book, and I remember each mass that we had, the same prayers, were said over and over. They never changed. But every service, it was the same thing. If you couldn't remember it, you consulted your prayer book. The priest said exactly what was in that book. He responded exactly what the response was to what he said. And it was that way every week. Well, what does this say? When thou prayest, you will not be as the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. And verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, you, when thou, you prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father, which is in secret, 
Thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they should be heard for their much speaking. So, what this comes to me is, you have a private one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Anytime you want it. Every day. You should have a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week love affair with, with Christ, with God. And he's saying, don't pray the same thing over and over again. You don't need to. He's heard what you prayed before. You know, if somebody's sick, you don't need to keep praying for that sick person over and over and over again. That's a vain repetition. He heard your initial prayer about their being ill. He says heathens pray with vain repetitions. That's his words. He also taught you how to pray the Lord's Prayer. They asked him, what do we pray? And he said, this is how you pray. And he told them the Lord's Prayer. So, these are just foods for thought, for your strength. Now, this one, this is a big thing now, is tattooing. And the new thing on the market, I guess, is your three-dimensional tattoos. And I saw some pictures of them, and they look very bizarre. I mean, they look so bizarre, they looked, they didn't look like uh, something's painted onto your skin. I mean, they actually looked really real looking but it is not body art and it is not body decoration because in your holy bible the words are you will not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead nor print any marks upon you that's pretty explanatory from your from your operator's manual your owner's manual your how to manual and this is coming from the highest authority that there is. And he's telling you, how do they tattoo you? Well, they do make, you know, cutting, and there is bloodletting out of it. And then they paint it, so it has color. So you're making cuttings in your flesh, and you're printing, coloring, these marks. This is about tattooing. All those years ago, he told you not to do it. So anybody that thinks it's pretty, anybody that thinks it's cool, anybody that thinks there's nothing wrong with it, man, you got to stop and think. You're not going to know these things if you never open the book. You're not going to know what's good. You're not going to know what's right. You're not going to know how to do things. You're not going to know who your enemy is or how they work or what they work with, what they work through. You're not going to know unless you read. And when you read the book, the Bible, all you have to do is ask him to help you to understand if there's parts of it you don't understand. Ask him to give you enlightenment, insight, insight. And maybe if it doesn't come to you, there'll be somebody else you can consult that will help you. But there's not an excuse for not opening the book. So that's what I have to say about the border crisis, and it maybe didn't solve anything. But... That's all I know is what would Jesus do about these if he were here? And I think I showed a few little verses of what he would do.